I'm Gary White for Channel 6 Central Kentucky Television and I'm here with Marion High School Superintendent Laura Schlosser for an update on what's going on with the schools and as we're recording this summer is coming to an end it is yes which means August is right around the corner <laughs> and we are going to have school starting very shortly right that's that's right the bell's gonna ring <laughs> yes actually as we're recording this I think uh, right tonight or tomorrow or sometime around now, you're going to have open houses that are going on. Absolutely. And all the different facilities this week. But let's talk a little bit about the dates that we have for when school actually starts for everybody. Okay, we're going to start with the first day for students. I, I know that's what yeah. families want to hear. Right. But next Wednesday, August the 7th, will be the first day for students. Okay. Um, and so there'll be lots of staff there, uh, lots, lots of excitement. We'll all be, be ready to see your kiddos. And then on Tuesday of next week, that's actually opening day for staff only. Okay. And so staff will report to the high school um, at 8 o'clock on that day. And so it'll be a nice way to kick off the year. It gives everybody an opportunity all across the district to get together. And we'll introduce new staff and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then on the 5th, a staff will report to their work site on Monday and they will take care of some required trainings, confidentiality, code of ethics, emergency management plans. Uh, there's, there's several required trainings that we will, will take care of on that day. And like you said, uh, there's open houses in different buildings across the district. Uh, we try really hard to make sure that elementary open houses don't conflict with high school because there could be families that have children in both grade levels. Right. So that's going on. Um, and then this Wednesday um, is actually the first district-wide professional development day. So on the 31st, uh, this Wednesday, we will actually have a conference-like session, so all of our teachers will actually participate in a conference-like setting. There will be nine different sessions, about 40 minutes each, and we'll talk about things um, that range from requirements to things that to get excited about. We'll talk about migrant education, social-emotional learning, personalized learning, um, uh, our My Shield app. Um, it'll just give us an opportunity to do some very short snippets of some really good information. And the nice part about that is, Gary, is we don't bring anyone in. Our, our, our very own staff lead these sessions. That's great. So it makes for a great day and a lot of movement. It's not a lot of sit and get, so we're excited about that day. Great. So there's a lot going on, getting all set for everything. Now, also, we want to talk about over the summer there have been some staff changes as well. And so some of the people, when they show up, are going to have new principals at some of the, office, at some of the different facilities, right? They are. Um, uh, the principals that I'd like to recognize is we'll start with Marion County High School. Uh, Mr. Robbie Peterson will be at the high school. He'll be serving as the high school principal. Not new to the district, but new right. to that building in that role. Uh, Robbie did an amazing job at West Marion Elementary and has also served in several capacities at the high school, athletic director, football coach. It's also served as a middle school principal at Lebanon Middle School. Um, and Daniel Mattingly, who has served as an ag teacher at Marion County High School and Nelson County, uh, will be taking over at West Marion. Uh, Daniel is a native of that area and a native of Marion County. He's very excited about that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a new assistant principal at the Knight Academy, Mr. Jordan Williams. He comes to us from Casey County and served as the band director there. Okay. So Jordan's very uh, enthusiastic, he's very passionate about learning, loves kids, uh, is very involved. So I think the Knight Academy uh, families and children will be excited to work with Mr. Williams. So really pleased with those new hires and, and look forward to a great school year with our leadership team. Absolutely. And actually a lot of them are part of a new group that you have developed for all the leaders to get together and talk, right? Yes, we do. We have a, a, a pretty amazing leadership team. Um, last uh, couple weeks ago, we had the opportunity to attend a conference in Louisville, Kentucky Association of School Administrators. It was a great time for a retreat-like learning experience. We spent uh, three hours talking about the whole child. Uh, we believe it's very important that we do not just educate our child based on their academics, and we, we don't want to just address their um, physical health, but also that social and emotional learning, that whole child. And we want to really focus in on that with our uh, children and our adults. 
for example, we want, we want to do things that we've installed water fountains where it's easy to refill your mug full of water. And, and we, want, we, we think it's very important that we, we focus on that entire um, child and that entire staff member. But uh, during our KASA conference, I do, I do want to brag about the Lebanon Police Department mm -hmm. because we, uh, we, we took the initiative to submit a video in regards to what we're doing for safety in Marion County Public Schools and we could only focus on one thing and the one thing I wanted to focus on was the relationship we have with the City Council, the Mayor and our, our Chief, Wally Brady. And he was nice enough to um, sit down with us and do a video and we put our video together with some of the things our staff did and we were selected out of the entire state there were only five videos selected and we were selected and I think it I think it's pretty awesome when you go away and you go to a conference and there's 173 school districts represented and Marion County was one of those districts that was highlighted and so I just want to personally thank mm -hmm. uh, Chief Brady for his time uh, but more more importantly just the commitment that we have from our city uh, to support us we have two great school resource officers I, I will say that again uh, we have uh, Officer Roney who will be at the Knight Academy and Officer Walsh who will be at Marion County High School we're very fortunate to, to have two school resource officers in our district uh, but our leadership team comes together and we do not meet to talk about things that's on a calendar we actually try to learn and grow together uh, we, we want to be instructional leaders as well as that person that's the biggest cheerleader for our school. So right. very excited about this school year. And I know with some school districts they have issues with funding with the officers in the schools. And I know you were not too long ago at the Marion County Fiscal Court talking about the possibility of getting some funding. How's the, how are the two funded? Are they strictly through the school board or are you working with other organizations on that? Actually, um, our Board of Education pays for half of the salary and the City Council pays for the other half. So our current partners are, are we only have one partner and that is the City. city. Mm -hmm. um, uh, currently our Sheriff's Department is, is down some officers mm -hmm. and so Sheriff Clemens is a, a great partner as well. It's just not an official school resource officer. Anytime we need something for them, they're always right there. You know, I feel like I can call uh, the sheriff anytime I need him. Um, but because of the shortage of officers, it just didn't work out at the time for us to actually have a school resource officer uh, uh, assigned to our outlying schools of Calvary, uh, West Marion, and Marion County Middle School. But again, still great partners. But right now, the official uh, school resource officer partners are the city of Lebanon. Cool. Now also there are some new programs also that we want to mention that are going to be starting this school year and actually one of them is at the tech school where students can possibly spend almost the entire day there to get the whole learning experience. Absolutely. Uh, you know our community is very fortunate you know with 35 plus business or industries I mean that's something to brag about again when uh, last week um, our Area Technology Center principal and counselor Christina McRae and Courtney Murphy actually presented at the Career and Tech conference in Louisville, different conference, but we were highlighting what we are doing with our students who are in the eighth grade who mm -hmm. actually attend the Area Tech uh, classes. And so what we found is there's a group of kids that really love that part of the day and so we want to basically personalize learning and so we're actually going to have an English teacher and a math teacher on site and those students can take their welding class maybe even two welding classes and they can also be enrolled in a math and an English class there on site so you know if they also maybe participated in a schools to work program that student would actually spend them their whole day and in some cases you know maybe not all day but the majority of their day at the area tech center and so you know that's something that a lot of people are talking about and want to do and and I'm really pleased that you know our district in conjunction with Marion County High School and their council uh, they see the importance of that. You know, it's going to bring a lot of smiles to a lot of kids' faces. Uh, we, we've got a couple of teachers, Miss Jenny Craig and Miss Peggy Price. Peggy Price is going to do our math. Jenny Craig's going to do our English. You know, they're willing to even work 
with industry to find out. Tell me what English slash communication should look like for those uh -huh. children. Tell me what math should look like for those. So we really want to make that very relevant to what business and industry needs. And you know, uh, you, you've heard me talk quite a bit about portrait of a graduate. You know, when we say a child graduates from Marion County Public Schools, it's not just about the standards on the piece of paper, but it's how can you apply those standards. Well, this is taking it to a whole new level because now we're saying, you know, how do you apply that to what business and industry want to see? Uh -huh. So I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. I think it's another example of how Marion County's leading the way. Um, uh, you know, I tell folks all the time, we're, we may not be in a metropolis, we may not be in a big city, but we're not going to let that affect the opportunities our children. We may be 60 minutes from an airport, but our kids are still going to get some, some really cool opportunities. Absolutely. And that's where we talk about when, I know you're going to be talking a little bit more about personalized learning. That's where it's kind of having very individualized experiences for all the students, right? Absolutely. Um, I think last year we may have talked a little bit about that we actually had a personalized learning study group. Uh -huh. The teachers and administrators that participated in that group, it was strictly voluntary. We looked at what other schools, uh, not just in Kentucky but across the United States were doing. And it, it just looks at what's Gary's strengths, how can he progress through this learning at his own pace and how can a child demonstrate that he's mastered content in a different way. The way I could demonstrate and you could be completely different, the pace of instruction could look completely different. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to continue to really uh, explore that more. Um, you know, if you watch TV, uh, there's a whole lot of commercials out there about online learning opportunities. In Marion County, we do have an online learning opportunity as well. Uh, but, you know, there's something to be said for that interaction with an adult. Um, also, the programs that we have. Uh, there are some online learning opportunities that are great. Maybe we don't have a particular class like an AP Microbiology. We don't offer that course. But that would be something you could take online for a particular child who's interested in something. So I think that as long as we see that every child possesses some very unique talents and abilities, and what they're interested in may not be the same as their neighbor, um, you know, when we say that we want students to dream big and, and that we never want them to lose that focus on achieving their dreams, it's okay for us to look at doing things just maybe a little bit different, right. but still providing that very rich tradition of being a knight and holding that shield up that we have. Um, right. A cool class that we're offering, some parents may be interested in, is if you go to the middle school, uh, you have the opportunity to be in a guitar class. I mean, whoever thought we would offer a, an entire guitar class? Yeah, that's cool. And so that's pretty cool. Yes. Um, you're going to hear more about robots. Um, I know there's some folks that are like, robots are taking over. They're not taking over. Uh, they're just going to be working alongside of us. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully if we have children that are building the robots, just think about what we're doing. And we're even going to have a VEX Robotics Club. Um, we're going to have two of our elementary schools that are going to partner. So Calvary Elementary is partnering with Glasscock Elementary and that group of kids are actually going to be doing a lot with VEX robots. We actually have two um, rings where you actually have competitions. Uh -huh. And so partnering with our Project Lead the Way, our pre-engineering program that's located at the ATC. Again, that's a program we didn't have a couple of years ago. Uh, we just dove into that and um, it's really taken off and there's a group of kids that really enjoy that and you know I don't know an industry that currently exists that doesn't have some type of you know information uh, technology that's needing some coding some uh, some type of artificial intelligence so um, it's it's going to be a good good opportunity for our children absolutely it's great and knowing what you're good at is very important and helpful because I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, but we want to, before we close, too, talk about something we've been talking about, I think, every time we've done an interview, and that's the facility plan. Yes. You're still yes. waiting on the state for that yes. aspect, right? We are. The plan that was submitted by the committee is at, has actually been sent to Kentucky, the Kentucky Department of Education. They actually have a division mm -hmm. that does nothing but deal with facilities. 
And so currently our 2019 plan is due. Uh, we have sent a draft plan. Uh, we are waiting on their comments. Uh, once we've been notified that those comments are going to be come back to us, we will advertise for seven days and there will be a public meeting. And so that'll be in the newspaper. We're required by statute to advertise for seven days. So that'll go out there. Folks are welcome to attend. Uh, and then basically, uh, you know, after the meeting, uh, there'll be some decisions made. And based on that decision, we'll determine what those next steps are. Um, again, we've been waiting, you know, and, you know, there are actually about 60 districts right now in the state, Gary, that are actually working on a district facilities plan. Mm. So with that being said, you know, we're just one of many, um, but hopefully things will get in place quickly and we will be able to meet the 45 day deadline to get this on the December Kentucky Board of Education agenda. Uh, which would keep us in compliance with having our plan finished up by the end of 2019. So Great. I'll keep you posted. Yep, we'll let you know. And when she passes along, we'll pass along too to let you know what's going on with that. But that's some of the stuff going on here in the Marion County School District. Anything else we need to let our viewers just, know about? Yeah, just a reminder this year we will have opportunity for, for children to actually have free lunch and breakfast again. Mm -hmm. And if they stay after school, there'll be a third meal option. Uh, we've had a great opportunity this summer with our summer feeding and, and the books that we've participated in. But, you know, sometimes when we're trying to gear up and get ready and we're trying to get our kids' clothes laid out and our school supplies, <laughs> just a reminder that that's one thing that you don't have to worry about. We will be providing free lunch and breakfast, and I encourage you to uh, uh, encourage your children to be a part of that. And at our secondary schools, we actually have something we call a second chance breakfast. Uh, so let's say that maybe mom gets up a little bit late. We don't get there just as early. Uh, typically, we will have time for the kiddos to eat between first and second period. It's kind of grab and go. And another thing folks may not know is that for our students that uh, attend first period at the Area Technology cen uh, Center, we have breakfast there as well. Again, it's like a grab and go. So again, when we talk about our children, we want to make sure that we address that whole child, their academic health, their physical health, mm -hmm. like I talked about, and wellness, and also that social and emotional wellness. We're very fortunate to have a guidance counselor in all of our buildings. We actually have partnerships with five outside agencies that can address any kind of therapy help that they would need, and our board was very uh, supportive. We actually have one person who coordinates all of our social and emotional wellness learning. So we understand if children's dreams are going to come true, we want to look at that person as a whole child and not just as a test score. We really believe in children's dreams. Great. Very good. Well, again, I'm talking with uh, Talora Schlosser, who is the Marion County School Superintendent. And the first day for schools in Marion County for all students and everybody is going to be August the 7th. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. And then we are off and running until, do we know what the last day of school is going to be? I'm not going to say. Somebody okay. may <laughs> hold us to it. You never know when it's going to snow. Exactly. But hopefully it will be on track. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Gary White for Channel 6 and Kentucky Television.